our lives, the mothers, the spiritual mothers, the women in our lives who are like mothers, we are so grateful. And I just ask right now that you just prepare our hearts to worship you this morning, Lord. Thank you for letting us gather together today and praise your name. In your heavenly and holy name I pray. Amen. Once again, good morning. I'm Pastor Jay. I'm so glad you're here to all you moms out there. And I love what Lindsay said in her prayer. Also, the women in our lives who nurture us and help us, uh, sisters and, and, you know, nieces and all sorts of people who help us in our life, grandmas. Uh, God bless you today. So glad you're here. Um, let's take a moment right now and let's gather ourselves in through prayer to God's presence, okay? Heavenly Father, we come to you from a week that's been busy. There's been a lot going on. Uh, we feel like we're pulled in a million different directions. But right now, we want to just go in one direction. We want to look toward you. We want to hear what you have to say to us today. We want to be inspired by it. We want to be changed by it. Oh, Lord, give us our marching orders. But also, Lord, give us that assurance that even when we fall down, even when we can't make the march, we're too tired. You're with us. You love us. Father, Embrace us with that comfort that we look for from mom. Help us, Lord, to walk now, holding your hands in your presence. Lord, be with us through your spirit. For we ask it in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, good morning, and I want to share with you first our lesson for today. We're going to be in the Gospel of John again. Last week we started this, and today we're going to continue on. And this is Jesus, you need to realize, this is Jesus talking to his disciples uh, at the Last Supper. He's trying to give them confidence. He's trying to help them see that he's going to be with them, that it's going to be okay, even though uh, they won't see him, uh, they'll see him suffer, and then they won't see him after a while. Here's what he says, as the Father has loved me, so I love you. Abide in my love. 
If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because a servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I've made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love <clears throat> love one another. Here ends that reading. All right, let's have our children's time. <clears throat> if I can get rid of this frog, frog in my throat. All right, kids, so good to see you. Mother's Day today. Uh, I want to show you <clears throat> how to make something for your mom. I mean, these little flowers right here. It's great to have a bouquet of flowers, right? But if you don't have a whole lot of money, uh, this is something you can make. All you need is some red paper and some green paper. And I made a little bouquet here. You know what I did? I put it on a chip clip. And that way you can stick it right on the fridge. It's got the magnet right here. You can stick it up on the fridge and you got your nice little bouquet for mom on mother's. Here's just one of them right here. So let me show you how to make these. Now normally what we would do is I would bring you forward and I'd, we'd actually make one together, but obviously we can't do that right now. So what I did is I made a little video. So let me talk through this video with you, all right, how we're going to make one of these. There we go. So you got two pieces of paper, six by six, six squared, and four by four. And you've got your scissors. And get mom or dad to help you with that. Probably dad, of course. Then what you do is you take the red, you fold it over, corner to corner. See how you're making a triangle? You see Pastor Jay, if he can do that, you can do it. You're making a triangle, and then you open up that triangle, and you fold it the other way. Watch. You fold it the other way to make uh, a cross right in the middle of it. Okay? Now, what will happen next, you see, is you're going to fold up those edges, those corners. You're going to fold up not all the way, just a little bit to become uh, the petals on the flower. And there you go. And then on the back, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the insides in a little bit just to make it. Uh, look a little more like a flower. So let's see how this is going to look. I'm going to hold it up in a second. Look at there's the back and there's the front. See, it looks a lot like a flower. So you put the uh, that over there and then you grab the green paper and you fold it over just like that once. It's going to be a little different though, so you need to watch. You fold it over like that and then you take those long parts. See the long part? And you fold it right to the center crease. And you do that on both sides. Try to be really careful to make it real nice and pointy on the end and get it nice and even. So there you go. It kind of looks like a big kite, doesn't it? It looks like a kite. So you do that, and then you turn it around, and look what happens. You're going to do the top part, the shorter part, you're going to fold over to the center. So there's one side. There's the other side. Okay, and the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take that long side, and you're going to fold it in one more time. So it kind of looks like making a paper airplane. So watch this. You're going to take that long section. You're going to fold it into the center. And it gets a little tougher here because it's thicker. But you fold it into the center. Make sure it's nice and neat. And you do the other one as well. Now a tricky part is coming up right after this. You're going to fold that sharp, longer part down over top of the shorter part. So let me show you how to do that. And you kind of roll it with your fingers. Watch how Pastor Jay's doing. He rolls it with his fingers. And it goes right down. You want it to match right up with the uh, wider end of things. So there you go. All right, and you crease that down, and then you take it and you fold it one more time down the middle. So there you go. Fold it over, and you're going to see a little bit sticking out the top, and that's going to be the stem for your flower. So you take that, you pull out the little center part like that. Look at that. You got your stem, and then there's a neat little trick you're going to do with your flower. Watch this. You're going to go back to your bloom. You're going to take the bottom of it, and you're going to snip it off to help get, get your dad to help you with this. Snip off the bottom. There you go. And then you're going to stick it right in there. It's going to go right in that hole. It's not always easy to do, I found. You can put it right in that hole. And look at that. And you got a flower. And then let's see if we can get it to stand up. It should stand up on its own. Let's see if it'll do that. 
All right, there we go. Great. Fantastic. There we go. There are our flowers that we have uh, that we were able to make. So that's a good way that you can make a bouquet for mom because, you know, moms deserve it. Moms work so hard and they love you. And you know what else we learned today is that moms and what they do for their children are a reflection of what God does for us. God loves us and cares for us. And so we say thank you to mom just like we say thank you to dad and our heavenly father. So let's put these up for now and let's go to our lesson. Over dinner, a mom was trying to teach her children about healthy eating, the benefits of eating naturally uh, colored foods. And she, she explained to them that the more colors you have on your plate, the more nutrients you have. And so she pointed to a plate on the table and said, how many colors do you see? Six, her daughter said, or seven if you count the burned parts. Poor mom, poor mom. Then there was another mom. She was, she was taken out for uh, Mother's Day for dinner to a high-end restaurant by her husband and her three sons, her three young sons. And he ordered a, uh, a bottle of wine that he thought that she would like. And the kids were just amazed as the sommelier came out and he was doing the ritual uncorking of the bottle. And he poured a little bit into her glass. At that point, her six-year-old piped up and said, Mom usually drinks a lot more than that. Poor mom. I'll tell you what, after this year, she needs that glass, doesn't she? It's been a tough year for moms. It really has. Very difficult. But you know, as you care for your children's mom, as you guide them and correct them and provide for them and comfort them, you are a reflection of God's love for each one of us. Jesus says in our lesson today, no greater love has a person than this, to give one's life for one friend, one's friends. I'll tell you what, Mom, you give your life in many ways for your children. And that's what Mother's Day is all about, right? Thanking you for that. But did you notice in the gospel today, there was a lot of Father God talk. Did you see that? Four different times, Jesus calls God Father. Now, you know, last July, I stood right here in front of you trying to be your pastor. And you threw questions at me. We had a big crowd of people, and you threw questions at me. And one of the things that I was asked is, Pastor, are you okay with gender-neutral terms for God, or maybe feminine terminology for God? And I said, absolutely not. I said, I usually call God Father because that's the example that Jesus set for me. But we have to remember something, right? God is neither male nor female. Jesus tells us in John 4:24 that God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship in spirit or truth. So God is neither male nor female. But I, I'll tell you what, if you went out on the street and you asked somebody to describe God, I bet you 99 out of 100 would say he's an old man with a long white beard, and he's sitting up in the sky on a throne, and he's got some lightning bolts in his hand that he's ready to shoot down on sinners like us. They would see God in that kind of a male way, and yet that's not the case, is it? because our God is neither male nor female. You know, one of the things we see from God is this sense of comfort. You know, our Heavenly Father comforts us. And that's something we say about moms, right? We say that moms comfort. Now, I know that you can run to your dad if you skin your knee, but who are you most likely going to go to? You're going to run up to mom, and she's going to wipe your tears, and she's going to hold you in her arms, and she's going to make it all better. And I know dads can comfort too, but most of the time, it's mom, Right? that comforts us. And we might ask, okay, if this is like God, then how can God, who is spirit, comfort us? Well, there's a few ways God does that. First of all, through his word. I've got my Lutheran study Bible here today, and uh, God gives me promises in here, and he gives you promises that you are a beloved child of God. Nobody can snatch you out of his hand. You belong to him. Nobody can change that. He also gives you the promise that you're his and part of his family in holy baptism that you can walk free every day because your sins are forgiven because of the price he paid on the cross. You're also giving the hope and the comfort to know that your life has meaning, that there's a, a plan that God has in place, and that plan ends with eternal life. That's so comforting as, you know, bad things happen in this world and uh, as we're separated from loved ones by death. We know we're given that comfort of God's promise that that is not the end. You know, we also experience God's comfort in Jesus. You know, Jesus, we're told, was the exact imprint of God's very being. 
We learn that in the book of Hebrews. And when Jesus was among us, remember what he did. He brought comfort of healing. Everywhere he went, Jesus healed people, everybody he could find. He didn't care their background. He didn't care their religion. He didn't care if the society saw him as good or bad. He, he healed them. He even healed the guy who came to arrest him in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus was a healer, brought comfort in that way. Jesus also reunited people with the Heavenly Father and with the community. Remember when he would meet people who were outcast, people that were, were judged because of the mistakes they'd made in their lives. And Jesus brought them in. That's another way that God comes us through his word. He comforts us through Jesus himself. And he also comforts us, we'll see if I can find this, through something I found out in our atrium. This is a pamphlet for Stephen ministers. Do you know about Stephen ministers? It's a fantastic program. I didn't realize how many hours of training they go to, through just so they can walk with you through life, so they can be beside you. And, and I was so surprised by all the ways they can help. I was looking at this, not one or two ways, but 15 ways they can help. Just a few of them. If you're grieving, they'll walk with you. If you're hospitalized, they'll be for, there for you. If you're, lone, you're lonely or discouraged, they'll be a friend. If you're unemployed or in a job crisis, they'll be there. Moving, relocating, new to the congregation, homebound, transitioning into retirement, dealing with a crisis of aging, experiencing a spiritual crisis. If you're a victim of disaster or accident, you can call one of these Stephen ministers. There's contact on the back. You can also call me because that's another way that God walks with us through the struggles of this life. You know, we hear the word comfort, and it sounds like a very maternal term, doesn't it? You know, we think, oh, well, comforting, that, that's kind of weak or wimpy or whatever, but it's not at all. Did you, know the, did you know what the word comfort is made from? Come fort with strength. Isn't that something? To me, that sounds like a godlike characteristic, with strength, giving comfort. I want to share with you a story that I found from a woman uh, about her mother. And this one really touched me. Listen to this. When my mom was first diagnosed with cancer in 2007, she was in complete shock. She did everything her doctors told her to do, chemotherapy, double mastectomy, and radiation, and eventually went into remission. We were so grateful and thought the nightmare was over. In November 2009, exactly two years after her initial diagnosis, it was discovered that the cancer was back and had metastasized throughout her lymph nodes, bones, lungs, and later onto her liver and a spot on her brain. It seemed like an impossible fight, but she fought harder than even I knew was possible. She did countless hours of research on cancer and how it works on a cellular level. She changed her diet dramatically going from meat and potatoes, Midwestern diet, full of processed foods and sugar, to a predominantly vegan and organic diet. She took up yoga and exercise with a personal trainer. She became fit and physically strong for the first time in her adult life. It was around this time I began to realize that my mom was so much more than just my mom. She was an extraordinarily smart, strong, tenacious person who wanted nothing more than to be with her family and friends for as long as she could. My mom did everything she could medically, holistically, mentally, spiritually, and physically to stay here with us. I will never forget that. It gets me through those moments when I'm missing her and I must ask, why isn't she here? She wanted to be here so, so badly. She moved mountains to stay. She looked death in the eye and said, not yet. And when the time came, that she acknowledged that she could not win this battle, she had no fear. She told us that she loved us and kept telling us she loved us until her voice was gone. My mom was the strongest, bravest person I've ever encountered, and I can say with certainty that no one will ever inspire me the way she did. This was written by Courtney Liebman of Shawnee, Kansas. You know, that's not just strong. That's mom strong right there. You know, a mother who cares and corrects, a mother who provides for and comforts her child is a reflection of that maternal God we have, a God who cares for us in every situation. Thank you, Mom, for giving your life
for the sake of your children, for the sake of our future. Thank you, Mom. Amen. As we begin our offering, we ask, we ask that you connect with us online by filling out your online connection card. And also for the upcoming sermon series, Pastor Jay has asked, what are your questions? Question about your faith, question about Christianity, about the Bible, anything. You guys can go to our website at ctklutheran.org or you can slip a note in the box in the atrium. Thank you.
Let us pray. Mother in God, we need you. We need your care, your comfort, your guidance, and sometimes even your correction. Lord, be with us as we enter a new week. Remind us of who you are. Remind us of the care that we are given. And Lord, help us to look close by at our moms, at those who've cared for us, at the mothering people in our lives who have helped us through difficult times, who've enabled us, Lord, to get through impossible situations. Oh Lord, help us appreciate those whose faces have reflected yours. Lord, we pray today for the moms in our church. We pray for all the women of our church. Bless them, O Lord. We also, Father, lift up to you those who are ill among us, those who need healing, those who need comfort, and those who need assurance as death draws near, that you've got them, that they don't need to be afraid. Lord, give us the strength, give us the appreciation, give us the spirit so that we can reach out and be that mothering, that caring person to someone in our life, whether that's at work or in our home. Lord, wherever we are, give us that strength and that mission. Lord, we also ask you to be with this church going forward. We pray, Lord, that we could be a center for such care in this community and in the world. Lord, make us creative. Make us open to the guidance that you have for us. And remind us, Lord, that we are ever and always safe in your embrace. Lord, we ask these things in the name of Jesus, the one who showed your love better than anyone else. We thank you for him. Amen. All right, well, we're going to receive Holy Communion. Hopefully you got one of these kits on the way in. I mean, just think about this. Moms are famous for cooking dinner. They've got something on the table for you. And along with food that we eat, we also need spiritual food. We need our time of prayer. We need our time with the Bible. And we need the sacrament. We need Holy Communion because Jesus promised that this will give us strength. Jesus promised that this will give us an assurance of forgiveness as a physical sign. You know, when I did the first communion with the kids, I showed them my wedding ring and I said, you know what? This is my reminder that my wife is committed to me. This is my reminder that she's promised to love me for better or for worse. This is Jesus' reminder that he's going to love you for better or for worse, that he's there for you, ready to feed you spiritually. So let's open the bread part, whether that's on the top for grape juice or on the bottom for the wine. Take that out. Take it in your hands. And this is what Jesus said. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's receive it together. Now if you'll prepare your cup, whether the grape juice or the wine, be careful. And then Jesus on that same night of his arrest said, in the night in which he was betrayed, took a cup and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, drink of it all of you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Let's receive this together. Oh, Lord, remind us of that prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, let's stand for our final song.
solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet are on the rock My Christ is solid rock I stand All of the ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet are on the rock When I feel my hope about to break I will cling to your unchanging grace Let the waters come and the earth give way I'll be dancing in the rain My feet are on the rock Now as you go on your way, may the living Lord go with you. May he go above you to watch over you, beside you to befriend you, within you to give you peace, and always before you to show the way. Amen. All right, one, two. I feel my hope about to break. I will keep to your unchanging grace. Let the waters come and the earth give way. I'll be dancing in the rain. Thank you for joining us this morning. Happy Mother's Day, and we'll see you next week.